Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about Open Assistant which is very similar to ChatGPT, however it is truly open source that means all its data sets, its models and its code is available for the public to see and contribute. If this is your first time to my channel, I recommend everybody to go to my playlist section to find the videos that are relevant to you. All right, let's get started. So what exactly is Open Assistant? According to their GitHub page, it's a project meant to give everybody access to a great chat-based large language model. So just like a lot of AIR tools are using stable diffusion in the backend to generate AI images, Open Assistant is aiming to have a bunch of open source model available for other people to use. You can find information of all the models made available by Open Assistant in this Hugging Face page that I'll link to my description. If you want to learn more about how Open Assistant collected its data and how it came up with its model, I'll have all the relevant links including this research paper from Cornell linked to my description. But this is more of a beginner's tutorial as promised in my thumbnail, so I'm not going to overwhelm you with information. So all you need to do here is to come to this link called chat in its useful link section and click on the button called chat. This opens up the chat front end of Open Assistant, which is similar to ChatGPT. And if you don't have an account, make sure to create an account for free and log in. I'm already logged in, as you see. Now there's a bunch of information on this page. The only two sections you need to worry about here is the dashboard and the chat. By the way, if you prefer the screen to be more of a dark mode style, you can go on the right here and click on this button right here. That changes the page to be more of a black and white style, which I prefer, so I'm gonna keep it like this. So if you scroll down on this dashboard, you're gonna see it says grab a task. And you might be wondering, why do I need to do a task? So Open Assistant is an open source project. That means it gathers inputs from users like you and me and improves upon its model. So if you are like me, who is a bit hesitant on paying monthly subscriptions, you can contribute by providing your own responses in training the model. If you look closely, you're going to see this one says 281 tasks available, 216 tasks available. And if you click on any one of them, you're going to see there's a bunch of things you can do and help out the model. For example, here someone asked this question and Open Assistant made this reply. And how you can contribute here is to answer the following questions based on the reply Open Assistant gave. Is this message spam? Is it a bad reply? Select any of these which apply to the highlighted message and rate the highlighted message. Is it low quality? Is it unhelpful? So these are all information that trains and improves the responses of Open Assistant. And I think this is both a great way to contribute to this open source project and also learn about different kinds of prompts. That way you'll both improve your own prompt engineering skills while helping out this model. By the way, if you're unclear on how to complete any of these tasks, you can just click on this button on the left called guidelines and that will give you all the information you need to participate in training the model. All right, after playing around with a bunch of tasks, you're gonna get an idea of how the assistant works. And after that, all you do is to click this button called try our assistant. And this opens up an interface which looks very similar to Playground AI where you can interact with the chatbot. By the way, I recommend naming all of your chats. You might see both of these says untitled cause I have not named them. So if you click this edit button right here, you can add a name. So the first prompt I'm going to use is related to a buzzword I've been hearing a lot lately, and that's called de-dollarization. Explain me de-dollarization in simple terms. Press enter. Okay, it says de-dollarization is a process in which countries reduce their dependence on the US dollar as a reserve currency or shift away from using the US dollars for international trade. The US dollar has been used as a global currency since World War II and it's used to settle most international transactions. If you look on the right, it says model llama 30B and there's no other options because right now that's the only model that's available on the front end for Open Assistant. Also, I just saw that I was kind of highlighted on the first prompt and I renamed the second prompt to be decided for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to change the structure of this response. I'm gonna say, change that to bullet points. All right, it has changed the entire response to bullet points. I do notice that the actual bullet points are more like paragraphs, so I don't know if that's intentional. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to change the language. I'm going to say change the language to Chinese. 
Okay, it's starting to give me the response in Chinese. I see some question marks. I'm not sure if that's expected or it's just my browser not rendering them properly. If you're Chinese speaking, maybe you can comment and say if this is a proper response. I see there are some words still in English. Okay, so it seems to have converted the whole thing to Chinese, but I still see some English letters right here. There's the word cleanse as well. So I'm not sure if that is expected. So now I'm going to say change the response to an English sonnet. Dollar hegemony reigns supreme indeed, a fact that some nations view with dread. For though it serves as global currency, its impact can be quite capricious. Each nation must maintain large hordes of greenbacks held in foreign shores to facilitate cross-border dealings, but lack control or its worth and measure. China, Russia, both among the ranks that voice concerns about dollars instability, which threatens much greater risk and reward in today's tumultuous global scenery. And while some fears may seem far-fetched, others are grounded in real politic. For what would come should America drift? These questions weigh heavily upon us all. I had to read the whole thing because that was actually pretty good. And I'm pretty impressed by this sonnet actually. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. For the last one, I'm actually going to give it a thumbs down because I see some English letters come up. All right, for the next one, I'm going to do some programming. And this time let's do Python Lang Chain. So Langchain is a new Python library that came along and I'm trying to learn it. So what I'm going to do is explain Python's Langchain library using some code. Okay, it says Python language has a vast collection of libraries that can be used to perform various tasks. And it actually gave me the math library, which I did not request. So I think it completely missed the point here and did not understand what Langchain means at all. So if you don't know, Langchain is a framework for developing applications powered by language models. And I was hoping Open Assistant could help me out there, but I don't think it understands Langchain yet, or maybe it's really new and it's not in the system. But I was thinking it could access the internet, but maybe I was wrong. All right, let me start a new chat and do some actual programming. Give me the basics of JavaScript as a cheat sheet. So it says, here's a brief overview of the basic concepts of JavaScript. Okay, it seems to have given me a lot of responses which are more informational and text-based versus code examples because I was expecting cheat sheet to be something different. But here it seems to be more of an article and it kind of stopped here. Let me see if it continues. Please continue. Okay, so I don't seem to have an option to let this specific chat continue and it starts again from scratch and this time it does a brand new reference sheet and I don't seem to have an option to stop this generation. And I don't know if that is by design or I just don't know how to do it, but I can't seem to stop this generation because I don't think it understands what a cheat sheet means here because it's giving me full scale definitions of things like big int in paragraphs which are written in English. So I don't think it did the job of creating a cheat sheet that well. Let me try a different kind of cheat sheet because I do want to try generating some kind of cheat sheet. So I'm going to do a cheat sheet for regular expressions. If you don't know, by the way, regular expressions are a way to find patterns in different kinds of text and identify the patterns and scrape out different parts of text. It has given me a lot of information, but I still don't think it understands what a cheat sheet means. And I think I'm going to let it go. Let me try a last example of implementing an API. API use. Give me a code example of using a Java API. Okay, it says this code reads the content of example.txt and prints out the output. Okay, let me change that to give me a code example of using the stable diffusion API. Here's an example of a Python script using the stable diffusion API. It says PIL, I think that's the stable diffusion API library. It imports this method called image. There's this URL from stable diffusion. There's an API key and it opens the image. It converts the image into bytes for uploading. 
it uploads the image to stable diffusion it runs the diffusion process and it gets the image path from the JSON response. So I think this was a much better response than the ones I'm getting. I think there's definitely some quirks and I might need to improve my own prompting anyways, but I definitely think there's a lot of potential here because this is open source, so it's gonna improve over time. So I'm gonna do a last query with something I was doing in my last few videos, that is my newsletter, email newsletter for my AI YouTube channel. The latest and greatest from AI channel name. It's been a busy few weeks here. We wanted to share some exciting updates. We hit a major milestone, 10,000 subscribers. I'm not there yet, hopefully reaching there soon. Okay, the structure isn't that bad. Let me update this email and say, add five AI art tools to that email. All right, I think I might have broken Open Assistant already, or maybe it's my internet, I don't know. Let me try that again. Okay, so here's a revised version of that email newsletter, including information about five popular AI art tools. It mentions Tally2, Deep Art, Photo Sketcher, Stable Diffusion, Latent Layers, and the email gets cut off again. And I don't know how to proceed when it gets cut off, and I think I just have to recreate the rest of the email myself. Let me do my last challenge and try to break it again. This time I'm gonna say, now change those five AI art tools to be ones which are Discord only. So I wanted to mention only the tools which are available on Discord, for example, Midjourney or Blue Willow, like not Leonardo AI. So I wanna see how it reacts. Here's the updated newsletter, including five AIR tools exclusive to Discord platforms. Okay, so these are tools I haven't used and it never mentioned Midjourney at all. I wonder if that's because these tools are new and I wanted to mention new tools only, but I think I tested Open Assistant enough today and you got an idea of how it works. Let me know if you have been able to use it properly and it has helped you out in your own work. And that's all I have for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Till the next one, thank you so much.